Hello everyone! In this fluid mechanics tutorial, we explain how to solve one very important problem that often appears in practical applications. Namely, we explain how to derive an expression for the discharge velocity of a flow through a small opening, such as an orifice, outlet, nozzle, short pipe or short tube of a large tank that you can see over here. To derive this important expression, we will be using the famous Bernoulli's equation, as well as the continuity equation, or the mass conservation principle. The derived expression is often called as Torricelli's law. Here is the problem formulation. We consider a large tank filled with water or with some other fluid with low viscosity. And we assume that this tank has a small opening. The opening can be a hole, orifice, outlet, short pipe or a no nozzle. The water flows out of the tank through the small opening in the atmosphere. Consider the two cross sections in this figure. The first cross section is denoted by 1, 1 and the second cross section is denoted by 2, 2. 1, 1 denotes the cross-section of the tank and 2, 2 denotes the cross-section of the hole. For simplicity, we assume that the cross-section areas of the tank and the hole are constant. The cross-section area of the tank is denoted by A1. The velocity of the top water level at the cross-section 1, 1 is denoted by V1. The pressure at the cross-section 1, 1 is denoted by P1. The area of the cross-section 2, 2 is denoted by A2. The velocity of the water through the cross-section 2, 2 is denoted by V2 and the pressure is denoted by P2 at the cross-section 2, 2. Here, we will introduce several standard assumptions. First of all, we assume that the flow is steady, incompressible and frictionless. Then, we will assume there is no fluid mechanical energy inserted in the system. That is, there is no shaft work and there is no heat transfer. This means that we assume that there is no turbine over here and there is no heat transfer from the tank to the environment and vice versa. Then, we assume that the pressure P1 is equal to the pressure P2 and equal to the atmospheric pressure. Then, under these assumptions, and under the assumption that A1, A2, H and gravitational acceleration constant G are given, we want to calculate the discharge velocity V2. We solve this problem by using Bernoulli's equation and the continuity equation. The assumptions stated in the problem formulation satisfy the main assumptions necessary to apply Bernoulli's equation. Next, we construct this figure. We introduce a ground level, then Z2 is the distance from the ground to the middle plane of the hole, and Z1 is the distance from the ground to the top of the water level. Next, we draw a streamline. Here it is, and here is the velocity V1 and the velocity V2. Now we are ready to apply Bernoulli's equation. The Bernoulli equation mathematically establishes a connection between the pressure, velocity and the gravity terms for all the points along this streamline. In our case, we will select this first point over here and this will be the point 1. And the second point, point 2. Mathematical formulation of Bernoulli's equation is P1 over density of the fluid at the point 1 plus 1 half V1 squared, where V1 is the velocity of the point 1, plus the gravity term G z1 where z1 again is the distance from the top to the ground and this should be equal to 
P2, that is the pressure at the point 2, divided by density rho, plus 1 half of the discharge velocity denoted by V2, and here is V2, plus the gravity term GZ2. Z2 is the distance from the ground to the middle plane of our hull. And this is equal to some constant. Since P1 and P2 are equal to atmospheric pressure, we can write P1 is equal to P2 equals to PA. Then we can see that P1 over here and P2 over here, as well as, as, well as the complete term, can be cancelled. Consequently, the equation takes this form, 1 half V1 squared plus GZ1 is equal to 1 half V2 squared plus GZ2. From this equation, we need to eliminate this term, 1 half V1 squared. This is because we want to determine V2. To eliminate this term over here, we need to use another equation. That is, we need to use the mass conservation equation or the continuity equation. In our case, the continuity equation takes this form. A1 multiplying V1 is equal to A2 multiplying V2. From this equation, we can express V1 as V1 is equal to V2 multiplying A2 over A1. Next, we need to substitute V1 over here. And as the result, we obtain this equation. 1 half, let's see what do we have over here. V2 squared multiplying A2 squared over A1 squared. And then we have the gravity term, and this should be equal to 1 half V2 squared plus GZ2. From this equation, we have the following equation. G, Z1 minus Z2, I obtain this term by moving gz2 to the left hand side then i will move this term on the right hand side and as the result i will have this term i can nicely write the resulting term like this and you can verify this v2 squared over 2 multiplying 1 minus a2 squared over a1 squared and finally, from this expression, we obtain that V2 is equal to square root of in the numerator we have 2 GH and in the denominator we have 1 minus A2 squared over a1 squared and everything is under the square root over here we use the fact that this term z1 minus z2 is actually equal to h that is this is h and we can see this from this graph since h is given over here and it's equal to z1 minus z2 here for clarity, I've wrote the expression for V2 once more. And this is the final expression for the discharge V2. Next, we can simplify this expression like this. If A1 is significantly larger than A2, then we have that A2 over A1 squared or a2 squared over 
a1 squared is approximately 0. Physically, this means that the area of our tank is much larger than the area of our coal. And this is often the case in practice. Then, under this assumption, this term can be neglected and V2 can be written as square root of 2GH. This equation represents the mathematical formulation of Torricelli's law. You write Torricelli like this. The two R's, I, C, E, L, L, I. So this is the Torricelli's law. Also, the Torricelli law is also called Torricelli's theorem. Over here, it should be noted that this discharge velocity equation is derived under the ideal assumptions stated in the problem formulation. However, in practice, the flow through the opening is not one-dimensional and it's not uniform. Also, the friction, turbulence, and viscosity effects around this opening might produce a non-uniform velocity profile across the opening. For example, over here in our derivation, we assumed that the velocity profile is actually uniform. And it looks like this across this opening over here. This is an enlarged view of the opening. However, in the practice, the velocity profile might look like this. To take all these practical effects into account, we can adjust this equation and a new equation looks like this. V2 average is equal to CD multiplying square root of 2GH. Over here, CD is the so-called discharge coefficient. Discharge coefficient. V2 average is the average velocity in this cross-section. For example, as mentioned previously, the velocity profile in this cross-section can look like this, can be a parabolic function, and these are the velocity vectors. If that's the case, then the average velocity is the average across all the velocity vectors and this vector can have this length and it's usually drawn at the center of the hole. That is, we draw it over here and this is our V2 average. The discharge coefficient varies from 0 0.6 to 1. It is a function of dimensionless flow conditions and opening shape. It can be nozzle, orifice, or a simple hole. For a round hole and low viscosity fluids, such as water, the discharge coefficient is around 0 0.65. For a round tube or a hose, the discharge coefficient is around 0.9. Okay, that's all for today. I hope that you found this video very useful and have a nice day.